Hello, everyone. This is Prophetess Angela Richardson, and I'm getting ready to do a teaching. But before I get started, I'm going to invite some people. Okay, so I invited some people. Like I said, this is Prophetess Angela Richardson. Um, I'm getting ready to do a teaching that God has given me to, te to teach for this week. And I just want to welcome everybody back um, from the holidays. We had the holidays and it seemed like uh, I've been gone a long time. You know, I just one week seemed like you've been gone a long time. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give do a word of prayer. Then I'm going to go ahead and get on in into the teaching. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you right now to, to be able to do this live on today right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we pray right now that as they hear the word of God that is coming forth right now in Jesus' name, that it will open up their hearts, Lord. It will prick their hearts, and Lord, that they will know that you had never forgot about them, that you would never leave them, never forsake them. That you will be with them to the end of the world. And to know that they have endured what they have endured during their, during their lifetime. That Lord, that you're getting ready to bless them abundantly for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So like I said, my teaching today is called, because you endured. And you know, a lot of times um, we've gone through a whole lot of things in our lifetime. And we didn't re respond the way the world responds. A lot of times, you know. You've been you've gone through things in your lifetime, you know, uh, maybe you've been going through persecution. Maybe you've been going through um, some um, pain in your body or uh, some sickness in your body. But you refuse to give up. You wouldn't you refuse to give up, you know, no matter what the doctor has told you, you refuse to give up because you believe what God's word declares. God's word declares that by his stripes that we are healed. So. We're going to continue to speak the word of God over our life, regardless of what the doctor is telling us. And we're going to endure. We're going to go endure to the end because we know that we're not alone, that God is with us. Uh, he's for us. He's with us. He loves us. And he's going to back us up, you know, as long as we are, our will our, and our lives are lining up with God's word and, and the will for his our lives. You know, he's going to back us up, you know, whatever that we decree and declare out of our mouths, it's going to manifest. It's going to come to pass. So I'm going to go ahead and get on into the lesson and the scripture I'm going to use today is Galatians 6 and 9. I'm coming from the New Living Translation version. It says, so let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest, a blessing if we do not give up. Now, that, that scripture right there ought to make you jump up and start shouting right there. Because this is letting you know um, we're going to go through some things. You know, Jesus said, you know, that we was going to go through some things. You know, but we, we also know that we're not alone when we're going through you. If you are in the body of Christ, if you name the name of Christ and you have God on your side, you are definitely not going through anything alone. He's there with you. He's there always to call out to his call. All you have to do is call his name. Most of the time, if you just call the name of Jesus, you know, uh, you'll just feel his presence just manifest in the room. So you never alone i just you know i just want the people to know that you are never alone you know you may not have your mom you may not have your dad like me i don't have my mom I don't have my dad, but I have, I have a father. Now, he my, he's my father, you know, and I'm never alone with him. All I got to do is cry out to him and get in his presence, and he'll come and see about me. You know, he comes to see about Angela, and I just thank God for that. But I'm going to go ahead and get on into the lesson. He said, because you endured what the enemy has thrown at you, and you didn't quit or give up. So, you know, like I said, we're going we, we gonna to be uh, accosted by the enemy. You know, I use that word accosted because that's what he does. He comes at us. I mean, he come at us hard, you know, especially with naming the name of Christ, especially with doing things that God has asked us to do with being obedient and doing what God has told us to do. 
that you gonna you best believe the enemy coming at us and he coming at it with both guns loaded but we we all we already know we have the word of god you know we have what uh um, different um, tools that God has given us to be able to fight against the enemy so we don't have to take anything laying down you know what I'm saying we don't have to get all beat up by the enemy and not do anything about it God has given us his word has given us so he gave, gave us prayer he gave us fasting he has given us uh um worship you know getting God's presence you know when you're feeling weary and worn down and and broken down you know a lot of times what we do is we we go 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 and never stop to replenish ourselves never stop to get into god's presence so he can fill us back up it's just so much we can do we can't be stretched here and stretched there because it's just so much we can do so at a point in time you know when we get to start dragging and start feeling lethargic and start feeling uh, tired all the time it's time to go back and get in god's presence Put you some worship music on, or better yet, sing you some songs. And, and as, you, as you begin to sing, you begin to feel God's presence come into that room. And then you uh, just open up your heart and let him come on in. And next thing you know, he done refilled you back up. And now you're ready to go on and do some more things, you know. But it's so very important that we allow God to fill us back up all over again. You know what I'm saying? Because, we, I mean, we, we can't be operating off fumes. Many, many of us have tried to operate off fumes. I have done it before. And I, and I was like, wow, I was like, people coming at me, you know, want prayer and different things, you know what I'm saying? And I pray for them and this, and you know, you know, going to different places and doing different things. And then now I was like, whoo, God, I need, I need you to fill me back up. So it's, it's so very important that we take the time to get God back in God's presence and let him fill us back up uh, again. So we can even go in and, and further because we can't help anybody. And we in need ourselves, so we ain't there's no way we can help anybody. So it's so very important that we allow God to fill us back up all over again. Said so now is the time for the bountiful harvest. Break through the, the breakthrough that you've been waiting for. So now it's the time for the bountiful harvest. You endured, you know, you don't suffer, you know. Uh, with me, um, I I you know, I've suffered a long time. Uh, when I when I first hurt my bike, it was in 2011. You know, I don't had three different bike surgeries. Um, not not cause I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? But I don't had three different back surgeries, you know, and I, I endured, I endured it, you know, and I, I got to the point now that I'm doing what a better. I have some bad days. Don't get me wrong. But I said, but I don't allow those bad days to have me. You know what I'm saying? I get on up and do what I, whatever I got to do, whatever God has told me to do that day. I, I make sure I do it. I don't let that be no excuses why I can't do what he has told me to do. Like I said, sometimes I don't even feel good. I, I do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, you know what, what he's requiring of me to do. Sometimes you may not feel good. Some, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you, you get up one day and you don't feel good and God has already told you to do them lies. So get on them guys and when you start doing those live the Holy Ghost will come in and next thing you know you'll be feeling good you know you won't even you won't even notice that that you're not feeling well anymore so when you didn't sow into the flesh but endure the heartache so you know a lot of times you know people different people different situations been coming at you and you know you know you know you say because when you won't respond like you used to respond you know good and well that God has undone some things in your life. That he has grown you up, you're matured more, and you don't respond like you used to respond, you know, before you got saved, you know, or, or right after you got saved, because God has, you know, he was he matured you to the point now that you know that's the enemy coming at you. You know that the enemy is using that person, you know, and that's a spirit that's operate through that person, so you don't respond to them like they, they will want you to respond because it's a lot of time the enemy will use them to try to draw you out so they can uh say uh, you can so you can act oh, out of character with them, and next thing on they gonna tell you is, oh, I know you wouldn't say no way, and you you this look how she acting, and look how she's uh, you know. Well, we we all you know say we are we we are still say you know what I'm saying, and in time we we uh. I have done something that you know maybe we was out of character we always can go back to God and uh, and repent and he will he will forgive us and we just get back up and do it again but a way a lot of times if we're having some issues with anger uh, with our flesh if it's out of control we need us we need to go on a fast you know we need to ask God say God I need to go on a fast I, I need to make bring my body on a subjection so what what how many days do I need to fast if say three days maybe um 
from 6A to 6P, three, eight, three days, um, drinking liquids, only liquids, and fasting and praying and get you some scriptures on anger, get you some scriptures on um, uh, bringing your body under, uh, under subjection, and begin to pray and, and, uh, and read and decree and declare those scriptures over yourself. And the next thing you know, you're going to be you're gonna be walking through deliverance because you can go through the self-deliverance. You are able to give take yourself through self-deliverance. So it's so very important that we we just do it you know i mean you know um when we are when we having them issues you know we just don't have to keep going over and over and over and over and over again just allow god to do what he want to do in you and if you need help ask god for help and he'll definitely help you because he definitely helped me when i was doing it when i was real angry i mean i was popping off and you know, at a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? And God, and he, he delivered me, you know? So I know now I know when people, certain people are coming at me or certain things are, are happening around me. I know it's the enemy because he, guess what? He's trying to draw you out so you can act out of character. So, you know, so you can lose your witness, but whatever we do, we're not definitely not going to lose our witness. He said, when you didn't sow in the flesh, but you endured the heartache, the mistreatment, the slander, the lies, and you didn't retaliate the way the world would retaliate. So when you don't retaliate, you know, we don't have to chase down no lies. We ain't even got to chase down the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things they may be saying may be true, but we don't got to, we ain't got to chase nobody down. We ain't got to go over nobody's house and knock on their door and say, you said this, I heard you said this and that. No, we, we're, we're maturing in Christ. We don't, we don't go there now. We don't do it, handle our business in the flesh. We handle our business in the spiritual realm. So we're going to, we're going to pray. We're going to fast. And a lot of things, uh, God allows that to happen to you so he can grow you up into a more mature Christian. You know what I'm saying? And so if it's like this, if you're having issues with anger or you have an issue with uh, self-control and a guy keep allowing things to happen to you so you can start uh, so you can start maturing in that area. And it seems like if you keep going through those things over and over and over and over again, it's because God is trying to teach you something. and You ain't learned a lesson yet. And so he'll keep allowing it to happen to you. So the minute you learn that lesson. And the minute you grow from that and continue to move forward, and now you don't pass that, now you know the enemy gonna come at you at some other kind of way. Now he know he can't he can't tip you in that way no more because he know that you don't grow up in that area. So now he's gonna come at you another kind of way. But you know one thing about God, he's going he's grow he's 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 um. Uh, taking us through a process he's growing us up to more to a full maturity you know it's a process so he's going to get some things out of us on a you know on a continuous basis and so what we have to do you know when we know i mean now you know we know when the enemy is coming at us you know we should know because you know um you know those that are spiritual you know we're, we're we got the holy ghost living on the inside of us so we should know uh we should have that discernment if we don't have that discernment then we need to ask god for it you know god give us that discernment because he said if we ask for it then he'll give it to us so we need that discernment so we'll know that when certain people come at us at a certain kind of way you know that's the enemy they the enemy is working through them you know we don't look at that person as being our enemy our enemy is spiritual, you know, but the enemy will use people to do different things to us. So we got to know that it's the enemy and we know we, we didn't know we need to pray. We need to fast, you know. We need to get out, get ourselves under control so we can pass that test so we don't have to keep going through that, that situation. Say, you prayed and gave the situation over to God for him to deal with that situation. So, you don't, like I said, you're going to pray, you're going to ask God to help you with that situation. So, you won't have to keep going through that same thing over and over and over again. If you're going up through something over and over again, it's because you hadn't learned that lesson yet. So, you know, you need to ask God, God, what is you trying to tell me? God, what, what lesson do I need to learn? So, I I can learn it so I won't have to keep going through this same thing over and over again and he'll tell you exactly what you need to know say so you prayed you fasted you worship you stayed in the presence of God so that he can refill you so it's so very important that we get in his presence so he can refill us back up you know because uh we we do be walking on empty I've, I've done it plenty of times I've been running here today taking people to the doctor's office doing this and doing that and now I'm tired and I ain't spent time with the Lord, and and now I'm like, uh, and then at least little thing get on my nerves. I'm like, oh, I, oh, I ain't spent enough time with God. It's time to get in God's presence. So if, that's, I mean, that's that's one way of you to know if you know you're getting frustrated, you're getting irritable. 
It's time to get in God's presence. You had spent enough time with him. So you walked in forgiveness when you would have walked in bitterness. So we're not going to walk in bitterness. Like I said, we know, we know that's the spirit. You know, we're dealing with spiritual things. You know, that's the spirit that's working through them. You know, if they if they was in their right mind or if they was uh, full of the Holy Ghost, they wouldn't be acting like that. So, you know, that's the spirit. So you didn't, didn't allow the enemy to distract you from the purpose that God has on your life. So a lot of times the enemy use that to distract you. So you'll, you'll be focusing more on what's going on over there than what you're supposed to be doing for God. So, you know, when you when you know that's the enemy and you don't you won't lose your focus on what God is telling you to do, you're going to still do your Facebook lives. You're going to still read. You don't still read the word of God. You're still going to pray. You're still going to fast. You still. I mean, if he's telling you to write a book, you don't don't you know, he'll use family members, you know, to get to you. Or maybe some people that you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? If you're running a business, he'll have people to come at your business. And, you know, some people that you, you're doing business with, you know, you they un, you can't satisfy them no, what, no matter what you do. You know, you know they, they unsatisfied, you know. And so, you know, he'll use different people. He'll do use different situations to get you out, out, out focus. You know what I'm saying? So we got to know that it's the enemy. And what he's doing, he's trying to keep us all focused and trying to keep us from doing what God has told us to do. So we can we cannot allow that to happen. You know, when you are, like I said, when when you seem like what the enemy does, he's just coming at you on both sides. You know, you're like you're overwhelmed, feel like you're overwhelmed. And you know that that you know without a shadow of doubt that's him. He's trying to make you lose focus on what God has called you to do. He's trying to make you stop what God has told you to do. And for example, uh, I'm gonna give a, a, a testimony. Uh, I was me and this young lady was fasting, and um, no taking communion. Me and this young lady was taking communion, and um, she was saying, "I I asked, I said, you still taking communion?" She said, "No, I quit taking it because seemed like all hell broke loose. You know, when I started taking the communion and start praying, you know, fasting and praying and taking communion. Seems she said, seemed like all hell broke loose. I said, there ain't nobody but the enemy trying to get you to stop praying. So you praying for a particular person and you and your prayers are, are, are making the impact. They're, they're being effective. So he'll have that person start acting up, start clowning even worse. To give you stop praying, to make you think that what you're praying ain't working, so you'll stop praying. But actually, what your boy's praying is working. That's why he's the enemy is upset. That's why he had them acting all up because he knows that if you keep praying and God heard, and God the word of God said God hears the prayers of the righteous. He knows that your manifestation is going to come soon. So guess what? He don't want that manifestation to come. So guess what? He, that's why he has those people acting all crazy. So you'll stop praying. So well, I ain't the only like I'm. I'm, I'm making no headway. Seem like the more I pray, the worse they get. No, that's the enemy. He wants you to make you think you ain't ha you ain't doing no good when you're praying, but you are doing some good. You are making headway in the spiritual realm. Like I said, we deal in everything in the spiritual realm before it manifests in the natural realm. So you are whatever you praying. If you're praying the word of God over that person, guess what? It's going to manifest after a while, right? You know, because God, his word is true. And, you know, his word is life. His word is power. You know, so, you know, it's going to manifest after a while. So if you're if the enemy is at you all kind of ways and you are now you're feeling like, well, I ain't going to pray no more. No, you you better keep praying because your manifestation is coming. Because you just don't know how close you are to your manifestation. You know, when the enemy start really ran up his ugly head, you are, you are really close to your manifestation. So do not stop praying. You continue to pray. And it said, you don't, you didn't allow the enemy to distract you from the purpose that God has for you. You kept going and you put all your trust in God. Put your trust in God. You know, I mean, we can trust in people. Some people don't, we, we can't trust in people because God wants us to trust people too. But you know, your, your ultimate trust should be in God, you know. Trust in God to do whatever you need to do in your in your life because He's the one gonna make people change their hearts. He's gonna be the one to make uh to get people say His said His word that He gonna draw them by His Spirit. So His we gonna pray and He's gonna draw them by His Spirit. So He's gonna give the increase. So you said you are still putting your trust in God to work everything out for your good. So God already told His word that He's gonna work everything out for our good. You know. It's already it's already in the word, you know. Just believe the word when you're reading it and you um you're reciting the word. Believe what you're reading and believe what you're reciting. 
Because you according to the word of God said, according to your faith, be it unto you. So your faith, your your faith is what's gonna get it done. You know what I'm saying? Because faith is the currency of the kingdom. So the word of God said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we got to have that faith to believe that when we praying that God is hearing, hearing our prayers, He He definitely hearing your prayers. If you're a child of the most high God and you're you're serving Him, He hears your prayers. He's hearing your prayers. Don't let the enemy tell you that lie that he don't hear your prayers because, yes, he does. He hears your prayers. He said, regardless of how long it takes him to work it out, you have taken, don't, no matter how long it's going to take you. Hey, hey, Anitra, how you doing? Don't matter how long he takes, it takes him to work it out. He hear you. Every time he, you pray, he hear you. You better believe that he hear you. Because like I said, the enemy get mad when he, he know that you, you especially you're powerful in, in your prayer life. Oh, the enemy gonna do. He gonna make. He gonna make somebody do something that's make you think that your praying ain't working. But I'm. I'm here to tell you that it is working. Yes, it is. It is definitely working. He said, "Um, you have take. Don't take your focus." He said. You have taken your focus off the situation and you have put your focus on God. Take your focus off the situation. I feel God. I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Take your focus off the situation and put your focus on God. Because God is able to change any type of situation. Just like with the Bible study last night, our apostle was talking about that Jesus is the I am, I am, whatever we need, Jesus is that. Is that. So he's, he, he, he hears your prayers, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times he has to take them, that person that you're praying for through some things, you know, for they can really realize they need, they need God. They need, they need Jesus, that they really need him, you know, because a lot of time the enemy has their mind fooled that they think they, they don't need God. But you know, we all need God. You know what I'm saying? It's a fool that say they don't need God. That's the word. I didn't say it. The word said that. You know what I'm saying? So it, you just you just give it to God and God's going to work that out. You know what I'm saying? You just trust God to believe and believe that. Take your hand off of it. Oh, I feel like I said, I feel God on it. Take your hand off of it and let God do it, what he's going to do. Because whenever you said, you uh, you said the word of God said to cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And whenever you pick it back up, guess what? God's just looking at you. He's like, what? She just gave it to me, but I see she picking it back up, trying to do it in her own strength. But you're not going to be able to do it in your own strength. So you let God do what? Let God be God. And only God can be God. Let God be God in the situation. It is re it is reaping time because you have passed the test with flying colors and you're walking in perfect peace. God wants us to walk in perfect peace. You know what I'm saying? He wants you to walk in peace. He said he gives us that peace that passes all understanding shall guard our hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. I, you know, I speak the peace of God to everybody that's on this live, to everybody come on this replay. We're not going to worry about. Our family members, we're not going to worry about situations we have no control over. We're not going to be worried about our jobs because if God gave us a job, you know, God's going to be there with us in that job. Everywhere we go, guess what? God is with us. No matter where we go, he's there. You know what I'm saying? He's there. He, he don't say he'll never leave you. So that means everywhere you go, he is. He is, right? Everywhere you go, he there. Okay. So he, he's not going to never leave you. So, you know, just believe God. Have faith in God. And so, you know, we don't, we don't have to, we, we don't have to be worried about things we have no control over. We don't have, you know, just go ahead and do what God is telling you to do. Don't let nobody, whatever nobody doing or what they ain't doing, stop you from doing what God has told you to do. Because, you know, God, that God has a mandate on your life. And a lot of, you know what I'm saying, if you allow people to, to uh, whatever they doing, if they doing good or doing bad, if you allow them to stop you from doing what God is doing telling you to do you're not going to grow in that area and God wants to is God wants to launch you into you know into the ministry that he has on your life but you cannot allow, cannot allow people to stop you from going forward you know what I'm saying because people gonna be people they fickle people is fickle you know I'm just playing I'm just being real you know people is fickle they like you today and they can't stand you tomorrow so what is that are you going to stop breathing because they don't like you? You know what I'm saying? You, hey, hey, Prophet Stephanie, we're not going to we're not going to stop breathing because people don't like us. We don't we're not going to stop breathing because uh, people don't care for us. It doesn't matter because, you know, in the word of God said Je they didn't they didn't like Jesus. Those Pharisees and those Sadducees, they ain't like Jesus because guess what? He was operating sign wonders and miracles. And guess what? They ain't had no power. They was religious. But they ain't had no power. They couldn't even cast a, cast out a, a headache. You know what I'm saying? 
You know what I'm saying? So they what they was doing is more they was doing more for for people to see. But they didn't have that intimate relation with God. But we, we got that intimate intimate relationship with Christ. You know, so he's there for us. He's, you know, we don't have to do it in nothing in our own strength. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? He said, uh, and I gave the definition of, of enduring. Enduring in Miriam Western Dictionary is lasting, durable, long lasting, patient, continuing for a long time. So we're going to endure. You know, no matter what comes at us, we going to endure, you know, whatever it is. We ain't going to let it stop us from moving forward in God. We ain't going to let it stop us from doing what God is telling us to do. We ain't going to let it stop us from doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? Life goes on. If, we, if we're walking around sad, uh, busted and disgusted, guess what? The world's still going on around us. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no use of you allowing that. Uh, that situation to stop you in your tracks. Ain't no use you allowing that. You know what I'm saying? Continue to do what God is telling you to do. Continue to move forward because guess what? The more you move, the more you're maturing, the more you're growing in God. And and in God's timing, he'll deal with those, you know, he'll deal with that situation or deal with those people, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times they got to bump their own head, you know what I'm saying? You know how we were, you know, we was out there doing all, all manner things, you know what I'm saying? Some things we, you know, we ain't had no business doing, you know. But at the point in time that we had, we knew we needed a savior and we was at our lowest oh, over there in Lodabar, you know, in, at our lowest point. And we know we know we did we needed God to get out of that got to get out of loader boy. So you know that's what God is saying. Don't 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 let it stress you. Don't let it stress you. Don't don't let it stress you to the point that now you got you going to the doctor. Your head hurt. Now you got to go to the doctor. Now they blood take your blood pressure. Your blood pressure one one eighty over one hundred. No, it ain't, honey. It ain't, that ain't it ain't worth it. I'm just saying it ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? Don't and don't be staying up all night trying to. My mind running not into nothing, trying to figure out some something something that you don't you don't have no control over. You just give it to God. Give, just give it to God. God got it. He's he's up all night. He's able to do anything but fail. That's what the Word of God says. Hey, Prophetess Candy, how you doing? So he's able to do anything but fail. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't got nothing to be worried about. You know, don't be what? Why worry? You know why? You know it doesn't make no sense. Said so many times when we are praying and asking God to move in a certain area of our lives, it may take years before the manifestation to come to pass in our life. So it may take years. You know, just like whenever I was when I injured my back, I injured in 2011. But I didn't have the insurance because when I had to quit my job, I didn't have no insurance. So I didn't have the surgery to 2014. That was three years later. But guess what? The manifestation came, right? So, you know what I'm saying? So, it's going to, sometimes it take a while, you know, for the manifestation to come. You know, sometimes, like I said, they didn't have that program in, in 2011. You know, they didn't have the program until 2014. So, you know, you just have to look at this, the way you, you see it, your perspective, the way you look at a thing. That, that matters so much is the way you looking at a thing. Ask God for his perspective on anything that you're dealing with. He said, um... When we didn't give up, but continue to pray and seek the face of God daily. I didn't give up. I kept praying. The doctor, you know, when I went to one doctor, he's going to say, well, ain't nothing they can do. And you don't have to deal with that the rest of your life. I said, the devil is a lie. I ain't going to do it. I know I ain't. Uh-uh. I'm going to find me another doctor. I found me another doctor. He said, oh, yeah, we can do that surgery. I was like, okay. You know, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to take his word for it. Because when God already said in his word that by his stripes, I'm healed. And he done took 39 lashes. For every sickness, every disease that I could ever go through, that means back pain, leg pain, knee pain, whatever, head pain, whatever kind of pain you dealing with, God had already took them 39 lashes for it. He ain't going to come back and take 39 more lashes. He already did it. You know what I'm saying? So our healing is already guaranteed. It's already done. It, you, it just got to manifest in the natural realm. It's already manifesting in the spiritual realm. He said God is able to strengthen us and help us. Hold on until what we have been praying for manifests in our lives. He's able to strengthen us. You know, like you said, all you got to do is pray and ask God for strength. God will strengthen us. The word of God said the joy of the Lord is our strength. He's our strength. He will go from strength to strength, faith to faith, you know, glory to glory. So God, he's there. He's there. All we got to do is ask him. A lot of times we don't have because we don't ask. You know, God don't mind us asking him questions. I, I, you know, I used to hear all the time that God, we ain't supposed to question God. 
Mm. Well, that's cra that, that, that's not right. I said, because whenever I go in worship or when I'm in prayer, I ask God a lot of things. And he gave me answers to them. You know, so uh, yes, you can question God. Yes, you can. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's certain things that you may ask for a question about that he may say, you, you know, he may not give you an answer for, you know, certain things that we, there's some things that we're not going to know. You know what I'm saying? So you quit, you know, quit trying to wrap your mind. I said, what it is, is we overthink ourselves, you know, quit all that overthinking. Just receive, receive, receive the word of God. Receive what God is saying. Quit trying to overthink it, trying to figure out how he going to do it. Ain't none of your business how he going to do it. He had to tell me, now I'm telling you, he had to tell me, um, I was, had, had asked for prayer on the prayer line one day, twice on the prayer line. And God told me from the woman of God that God said, get out of his business. I said, oh, okay. Get out of his business. I said, oh, I'm in God's business. I said, okay, let me get out of his business. And that's what I did. Well, I got out of God's business. Let him do what he going to do. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't my job to do it. I'm not God, but he is. So he's able to do anything but fail. So we cannot be distracted. We cannot be distracted. The enemy, because he will use anything. You cannot be distracted because the enemy will use anybody, anything, or anybody to distract us from the purpose that God has on our lives. He don't care who he use, you know, you know, with a lot of us that's married, he'll use our husbands. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't careful, he going to use you. So you got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? He'll use us women. He'll use us. You know what I'm saying? So we have to really be careful and knowing that what, you know, whenever we, uh, whatever we doing that, you know, it, it ain't, you know, we're not siding with the enemy. We're not going to be in his, um, minion, his, um, his, uh, we're not doing what he's wanting us to do. You know what I'm saying? So we got to be make, make sure we're careful. Say in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I like that. I like that. The New Living Translation, I like to amplify it because it kind of breaks it down where anybody can understand it. It says, so that, so that Satan would not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. So uh, he's not... You know, we, you know, we know he, you know, he's going to come up with something. You, you, that's him. You know what I'm saying? He going to come up with something. Said so we should know that anything, anything that is contrary to the word of God that is happening in our life is sent by the enemy. Anything that's contrary to the word of God that's sent in our lives is the enemy. You know, cause God is not, he's not going to, um, do anything contrary to his word. You already know that. So anything that's coming at us that's contrary to God's word, that you know that, you know without a shadow of a doubt, that is the enemy. So we guess what? We already know how to fight against him. He said to, to, um, to make us lose focus or something that you have no power. And, and sometimes, you know, what, a lot of things that he bringing to us, you know, um, that we, know have, we don't have no power to change it anyway. Like I said, only God can change people. You know, if we get it in our head that we can't change people, then we'll be all right. You know, only, only thing we can do is pray, pray fast. You know, only, that's the only thing we can do for somebody. We can't, we can't make, we can't twist nobody on. We can't put them in no headlock and make them do right. Only God can do this. Only God can change people. Only God can change hard hearts, remove the hard hearts and give them a heart of flesh. Only God can do it. Said because only God can change people and move the hard hearts, change minds and their perspective. Only God can do it. We can't do it. So there is no need for you to be worried about something that you can't change. You need to refocus and get your mind back in communion with Jesus. So refocus. Change your mind. Oh, ain't no use to be worried about what's going over there on the left or on the right. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus and continue to do what He's telling you, God is telling you to do. The only thing that we can do for anybody is, like I say, pray and keep it moving. Only thing we can do. Pray is and keep it moving. Ain't nothing we can ain't else we can do about it. Just put pray and keep it moving. The enemy wanting you to be so focused on other things that you will stop what you're doing for God. We're not gonna stop what we're doing for God. If you ain't started doing what God has told you to do, uh, you know it's now the time to get started. You know, now's the time to get started. You know, cause you just like with in Esther, you know how she was put in the in in uh in the kingdom as the queen for such a time as this. To save her, her people, the Jews, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, King Af Af Azareth, he was he was in, enamored by her. She was beautiful. 
So, you know, even though she could she could only go to to the um to where he was only by being summoned, but she told Mordecai when Mordecai told her that um that she needed um to uh go to the king uh, concerning her people First she said no, but then Mordecai told her, said, well, if you don't do it, God will raise up somebody else to do it. And then your, your, you and your family, will, uh, your, you and your father's house will be destroyed. So she said, okay, uh, if I perish, let me perish. So she told, she told Mordecai, go tell all the Jews, let's fast for three days, and she going to fast. And not only was she going to fast, she was going to have her handmaiden and everybody there with her going to fast for three days. And then she was going to see the king. And so what they did, they fast for those three days. And guess what? She went to see the king, you know, to make a long story short, not to keep getting, you know, which is a long story. I like the story of Esther, but it's a long story. But to make a long story short, hey, prophetess Alina, how you doing? To make a long story short, she went to the king and told him about the, the plan that Haman had to, tr to kill all the Jews because he had King Avarice to write this decree that the Jew to kill all the Jews but so she knows she had to move now was the time to move so I'm telling somebody on this live now is the time to move you know you know it's time to get out of those caves Come out of them caves, get out of the corner of them caves, and be who God has called you to be. Now is the time to move to get out of those caves. I feel the Holy Spirit on this. Now is the time to move and get out of that cave and be who God has called you to be. You don't want him to raise up somebody else to take your place. And you're sitting around looking and saying, God, that was supposed to be me. Because he is not going to keep begging you and begging you to be who he has called you to be. Mm, my Lord, let me get back to my lesson. But anyway, he says, so there is no need for you to be worried about something that you can't change. You need to refocus and get your mind back in communion with Jesus. The only thing that you can do if anybody is praying, like I said, now is the time to move. You know, when you, I mean, I'm going to say this and I'm going to go ahead on. When you think, why, you know. Uh, when you already know there's a calling on your life, when you think you is is okay, when you already know there's a calling on your life, and you're sitting on it, I put it like that. The Holy Ghost, give me the right way to say it. When you know there's a calling on your life and you're sitting on it, you're stopping. Uh, you know, when you're not growing more in God and you're allow not God allowing God to work, um, do some things in you. Now you got some other people hold up. It's some people that are tied to your destiny. To you making it to your destiny. It's some other people tied to you. So, you know, um, because there's a word in your mouth that nobody else can give. Because it's the word God has put the word in your mouth and it put in your belly. And so when you raise, when you go ahead and do what God is telling you to do. And so when you, when they hear that word that's coming out of your mouth, they're going to be healed and delivered and set free. So when we're, when God is, is raising us up, it, it, you know, we can't think it's just all about us. It ain't about me. It's not about Angela because these people that tied to my destiny that for me getting to my destiny. So that's why it's so important that when he told me to get out of the cave, guess what? I got out of the cave. I had two prophecies that God said, come out of the background and get in the front. He didn't have to tell me no third time. I got on up and, and moved on out. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a purpose that God has on your life. So he said, uh, you have to be patient for a long time and continue to be obedient to God. So now it's the time for the harvest to begin. Now, like you said, if you, if you've done everything God is telling you to do, if you endured all that God, you, you endured and you didn't act up like, like, you know, like you would have acted up in the past. You know what I'm saying? That God, you were letting uh, allow God to mature you and more in him and getting some things out of you. And now it's the time for manifestation. You know, that God is getting ready to bless you. So it's so very important that we make sure that we we allow God to do what whatever He want to He can do whatever He want to do in me, you know, because I ain't perfect, you know what I'm saying? I I you know I'm striving to be more like Jesus, you know what I'm saying? So you know when we're when we're telling uh, the Lord and the enemy hears us too now, when we're saying Him telling Him that we want to be more like Jesus, so guess what? He's coming at us because He guess what? He went at Jesus when Jesus was fasting those forty days and forty nights. The enemy came to Him. 
told him to turn those stones into bread. Jesus told him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he kept coming at Jesus. He kept coming at Jesus. So you already know he going to come at you if he tried Jesus, right? You know, we ain't exempt. We are not exempt. You know what I'm saying? He's going to come at us. He's going to try us. So, you know, um, it's so very important that we 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 just do do what God is telling us to do. You know, I, you know, I, I guess God had me the spokesperson. Every time I get on Him, I'm, I'm always telling somebody to do what they what God is telling you to do. And I know you're hearing God. You, I know you you're prophetic. You're hearing God, and you're hearing the voice of God. And when you don't when you don't walk out and you don't step out and tell those people what God is telling you to do, you're walking in disobedience and rebellion. And we don't want to be walking in disobedient rebellion with God. We want to tell people what they what God is telling us to do. And you know, uh, is you know, don't worry about being uh, rejected. You know, I've 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 uh, approached a lot of people. You know, and um, somebody was talking about their back one day. I was I was doing that at the flea market one day, and there was somebody was talking about their back, and I said, "Oh, can I pray for you?" They said, "No." You know, we all got to die with something. I was like, "Oh, okay, you want to die with that? Okay." You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and I, and I felt some type of way at first and I began to ask the Lord about it. He said, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not going to receive you. She said, but the ones that do go ahead on, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't even work. They rejected Jesus. So, you know, they're going to reject us. Everybody ain't going to, everybody ain't your friend. Everybody ain't going to love you, especially when God is moving you up and growing you up more in him and they can see a difference in you and you are growing. Sometimes you are, you're going to outgrow those people. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, uh, so, you know, everybody ain't going to like it. You know, everybody going to have something to say, well, I don't think they are, they are prophetess or I don't, but it don't matter what you think. It only matter me who is what God say. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, he's the one I got to answer to when I please him. I, I'm, everything else is cool. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to please everybody. I don't, I'm not trying to be no people pleaser. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm pleasing God, if I'm, if not, if I'm people please, pleasing people more than I'm pleasing God, something wrong. You know what I'm saying? I want to please God above all. You know what I'm saying? I want to please God. I want to do what he's telling me to do. Regardless, he tells me all the time to do some things. And it's taking me out of my comfort zone. And I was like, what, God? You you want me to do what? I'm like, okay. All right. I go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't comfortable with it, but I go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the more you you, you do what God is saying, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, the, your gifts will get stronger and stronger and stronger. The more you use them, it's just like with uh, practice. You know, that like you if you uh, uh, started playing the piano, you taking lessons to play the piano. And the more you take lessons and the more you practice the piano, the better you get at the piano. So it's just like with that. With the gift of prophecy, the more you use it and quit setting down on it, the more you use it and use it and use it, the stronger you get in it. You know, that's with any of the gifts that God has given us. The more you work, activate your faith, the more you exercise your faith, the stronger your faith will get. You know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, it's just a process. You know, just don't allow the enemy to stop you, to, to, to keep you all uh, bound up and not operate in the gifts that God has placed on your life. Go walk out in it. Walk out in it. Walk out in the gifts that God has placed on your life. You know, God is backing you up. You are not going it, doing it on your own. He's backing you up. He's there to back you up. He's letting you know he's there for you. He's with you. Uh, you're not going to fail. A lot of time, you know, we have, we feel, have the fear of failure. You're not going to fail. He's not going to allow you to fail. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, just continue to move forward and say, if you go and prophesy to somebody and they, and they don't resonate with it, then, uh, okay. Okay. Well, it ain't for them. Maybe it's for somebody else. So, I mean, don't even, don't even let it bother you like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't have plenty of prophecies. And when I, they it was telling me the prophecy, I was like, huh? I was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, that wasn't even, you know, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't for me. Maybe it was somebody else in the room with me, you know what I'm saying? But still, that is no reason to stop doing what God is telling you to do. That is no reason to quit because like I said, the more you use that gift, the more you get in God's presence, the stronger those gifts will get 
Um, so ne to the next thing you know, you know, maybe you'll be doing that, uh, phone numbers or addresses or, you know what I'm saying? But it's a process, you know, the ones that's doing that now, you know, they had to start somewhere. They ain't just automatically started doing what they're doing now. They had to grow up to that point, just like God is growing us up to that point. So I don't even know why I'm going here, but anyway, but anyway, God is going to grow us up to that point. So don't don't feel like you got to know it all right then and there. You don't you don't. It's a process. Just just allow God to grow you up in that process. Says um things that you have been praying for years are getting ready to show up in your lives. You are now on that open heaven where all you have to do is speak what you need and it will manifest in your life. And you know, and this is for the people that's been a been that's been obedient, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh you know, I, I, I just got to put that out there. Now, if you know you've been obedient and you've done everything God has told you to do, this is for you. You know what I'm saying? And not to saying that, you know, for the people that hadn't, you know, God has given you the opportunity. He had me on him to give you this word and let you know it's time to get busy. You know what I'm saying? It's time to give, do what God has telling you to do. It's time to get busy. You know, because the word of God said, if you be willing and obedient, Whatever God is telling you to do, you will eat the good of the land. You know what I'm saying? That is what God's word just declares. You know, I'm I'm just I'm just quoting God's word. You know, it ain't what ain't it ain't Angela's word. It's God's word. You know, so you know if you ain't been doing what God is telling you to do, now is the time. You know what I'm saying? Now is the time. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing shake your face. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care who what whoever said. You know. You, you, oh, I, but I do know what God's word said. His word said it's by your stripes, you are healed. And all sickness is not under death. I don't care what the doctor say. You hear me? I don't care what he say. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I know plenty of people that's going to been healed from cancer. Uh, I don't know plenty of people that's been healed from, uh, the COVID-19. I don't know, no plenty of people that healed from all, all manner of sickness or diseases. You know what I'm saying? So God is with you. Don't be walking around here feeling like that he's not with you just cause, well, I'm sick. God, I mean, just, I'm just for example, how you do me. You know, sometimes I'll be feeling good or something wrong with me. And God said, well, uh, maybe my, my back is hurting that particular day. I done did too much that day and now my back is hurting. So I said, God, my, my back is hurting. And then, uh, then, uh, so he said, go pray for this person for their back. I said, God, how am I going to pray for their back? My back hurt. He said, okay. He said, but I go do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Or pray for their shoulder or something there. And I pray for them. Do, do what he's telling me to do. And next thing you know, um, uh, as we, as we go, you know, just like, um, God always bring that scripture to me about the 10 lepers. Jesus told the 10 lepers. As you go and show yourself to the priest, you will be healed. And as they went, they was healed. So God, when I always think about that, you know, uh, that whenever I do what God is telling me to do, next thing I know, I'm going to look up and I'm going to be healed. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, 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 um, profitable walking in obedience to God when he's telling you to do. So you said like that open heaven, isn't a lot of time people think it just finances all the time, but it's, it's whatever you need. If you need physical healing, healing, you can get it in that open heaven. You need finances. That's in that open heaven. Whatever you may need is in that whole open heaven, but you got to know when, when that, when it's open, you got to move when it's open. You know what I'm saying? Just like, um, I'm going to say this and I'm going to go ahead on, but I heard about the, uh, the man that had been laying there. I think it was 38 was it how many years had been laying at the pool of Bethesda for all that long time and then he said when the angels trouble the water somebody always make it down there before he get there you know I mean excuses because every year he could have got closer to the pool to the next time the uh, angel trouble the water he could have been the first one in there so you know we just got you know we got to be careful that we're just not making excuses to be making them you know what I'm saying? Because God is with us. He's 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 a healer. He's a he's a healer. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. You know, whatever you need, God got it. He is the great I am. He has everything that we need. So like I said, you're on the open heaven. So whatever you need out of this open heaven, you tell God what you need. And he's going to manifest. It's manifestation time. It's manifest, manifesting in your life. Say so God is getting ready to show his people off. What God is going to do for you will definitely blow your mind. God is getting ready to blow people's mind. You know, you, we can't we can't even comprehend some of the things God getting ready to do for us. You know what I'm saying? 
So you will have people coming to you, asking you what you have done to be so blessed like you are. So that's going to give, God blesses us to the, um, so we, to be a blessing also. But God blesses us so the people are, uh, that's not saved when they see us. They see us blessed, you know, abundantly blessed. We are blessed so much that the blessing don't have us. Like, if, for example, that God gave us a nice vehicle and um, we asked God for a nice vehicle. He gave us a nice vehicle. And on Sunday mornings when we should be in church, we out there washing our vehicle. No, no, we know we're going to go on to church because we're going to thank God because God gave us that vehicle. What I'm saying is, but he said, but we're going to, God's going to show his people off because beforehand it was the, as if the world had more than the church. But God said, no, he's flipping the thing. He's shifting the thing. So now the church going to be uh, abundantly blessed and the people going to see us and they going to want to know, uh, what you do to get that? Or I mean, what kind of, what kind of job you got? You know what I'm saying? And it ain't going to be about my job. It's going to be about what God is doing. You know what I'm saying? So now that going to give you the, that window opportunity. So when somebody come up there and ask you about this, or about that, they're going to, that's your opportunity not to keep your mouth closed, but that's your opportunity to open up your mouth and tell them that it was God that did it. And reason how he did it was tell them your testimony, how God had delivered you from whatever he has delivered you from and let them know how you got delivered and then they're going to want to know well I want to know the God that you know I want to know that God too and guess what then you got no we ain't going to tell them to come back to church on Sunday we already know what the, how to do it we already going to lead them to Christ we already know how to we already know Romans 10 and 9 we already know that scripture guess what we're going to stand up there and we're going to lead them to Christ and guess what they're going to want to follow you they're going to want to know where you go to church at and they gonna want to follow you, you know. Say, I want to. I, I ain't gonna go to that other church. I want to follow you, cause hey, look at the way you operating, you know. And I can feel the Holy Ghost flowing in your life. I want to go where you you going, cause I want what you got. You know what I'm saying? So that that's what God is going to do in this season. You know, that's what He's getting ready to do in this season. So you just got to be prepared. You know, you know, it's no, it's time. It ain't time to be holding back. You know, when God want to bless, we we want to be like the sons of Issachar. We want to be in the right season at the right time. We want to be partnership with God. You know what I'm saying? We want to be right there. You know, we don't want to miss God. Don't be somewhere else. You ain't got no business and miss God. Is what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord. He said that will be your window opportunity to witness to them and tell them about a forgiving God. With God is a forgiving God. He's a very compassionate God. You know, He doesn't hold anything against us. Once we we uh we uh, we've done something, all we got to do is repent and change our mind and make a one hundred eighty degree turn and start going for you know forward in Him. You know, He forgives us. And they want they gonna they gonna be wanting to know. There's so many people out there that's hungry, wanting to know the word of God. And if the word of God is in your mouth, man and woman of God, it's in your mouth. And it's time that we start opening our mouth and letting people know who we know. You know what I'm saying? Who we know. Say God wants to save and deliver them from the hands of the enemy. Remember all the blessings that God of God that are in the Bible belongs to us. So every one of the blessings of, of God in the Bible belongs to us. You know, and God wants to bless us. Say, if you're a follower of Christ, walking in obedience, we got to walk. I don't know how to, I don't know how else to tell you. We got to walk in obedience. I mean, it's, it's in the obedience. It's in the obedience. It's in whatever you've been praying for and look and, and uh, asking God for is in the obedience. And a lot of times people always say, well, I'm waiting on God to do this. Uh-uh, you ain't waiting on God because he's waiting on you to move and to walk out in faith and believe him at his word. That is what he's waiting on for his people to really believe what they're saying. You know, a lot of times we say we believe him, but we ain't moving as if we believe him. So we, we, we got to move. You know, it's not the time to move. We, we can't keep standing still. Say keep holding on and never give up because your breakthrough is now. You know it ain't I. It ain't I ain't said it was in the fruit. I said now your breakthrough is now. So it's like I said, you got to walk in obedience, regardless of who is not changing. You are so we, regardless of who around you it ain't changing. You gonna be the one that's gonna change. You know what I'm saying? So people can look at you and see that there's a difference in your life. There's something different about you. You know how we do? We go different places and we walk in the room and the people are are meeting 
really know who you are, a man or woman of God, and you ain't open your mouth, that is, that's what I'm talking about. Because they see the glory of God is on you. God want us to be glory carriers. He want us to walk in his glory. But we got to be obedient to what he's telling us to do. So you are mature and more in Christ and your circle is changing. So like I said, our circle's got to change. You know, a lot of people that we've hung around and with in the past, you know, if they ain't on the same page, if they ain't want to go where we want to go, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, many times God will move them from around you. And a lot of times we get, we get mad, we get offended, we get, we be hurt because they, they're no longer there, but they're longer, no, no longer there because God has moved them. Cause you are growing, you are going further in him. You're going up in him. You're going deeper in him. You're going forward in him and they're not ready to do it. They're not, they're, uh, they're maybe not, they're not ready or maybe they don't want to, you know, you know, cause like I said, God is not going to force himself on anybody. He's not going to force nobody to do nothing. You got to want it, do it. You got to love God that much that you want to do whatever he's asking you to do. Say so God is shifting you into the new season of your life. And in this season, in, the, in this new season comes breakthrough, finances, healing, the whole abundant life. God wants us to live the abundant life. He don't want his people poor, bu busted and disgusted, robbing from Peter to pay Paul. That ain't his, that ain't his will for us. That is not his will for us. I heard it so many years that God wants to be poor. That's a lie from the pit. He don't want us to be poor. How can we build up the kingdom of God? Robbing, robbing from Peter to pay Paul. Ain't no way we can do it. He, uh, he, he wants us to be live to abundant life. You know, to be a blessing to his kingdom. Because it takes money to do ministry, you know. You know, and a lot of people get mad, you know, when you ask them for finances, you know. Uh, paying, getting your tithes and offering. A lot of get people mad. Well, that's all they want is money. Well, you went to Walmart and they wanted money. Then when you when you put that stuff in that buggy and when you got to that cash rig of what they got. They got money. Either they got it from cash or a car. They, uh, uh huh. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people... You know, I, I just, it just behooves me how people go off on the church when the church is asking for finance. You know, everybody and every every leader in the church ain't about money. Every leader ain't about money. If you at a church and the leader about money, it's time to move. Um, anyway, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. You know, every leader is not about money. Some it's a lot of leaders that love people. They love. They want to see people uh uh move up. They want to see people walk in the gifts that that God has on their life. They're not. They're not there to hold you stagnant. They're not there to hold you down. They wanna. They wanna. They want you to to be blessed. They want you to be uh successful. If you got a business, they want. I mean, they want you to be that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. You know, every every leader is not like that. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, you know, God wants to bless you. You know, he wants us blessed. Because like I said, there's no way we can help nobody, not even ourselves, if we're not blessed. So, you know, it's, you know, but I, like I said, I'm going to get off that subject about the tithes and offering. I don't want to get nobody mad. But anyway, we, we it's, so, it's so very important because the word of God says, uh, Malachi 3 and 10, and when we give our tithes and offering, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessing that we wouldn't have room enough to receive. So, you know, when we give it, we give it our tithes and offering, you, we open, we open ourselves to the blessings of God. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's always going to be seed time and harvest time, you know, bread, you know, there's always going to be seed time and harvest time. So if you're not sowing any seed, there's, there's, there, there cannot be no harvest. So, um, he said, um, you are going to reap everything that God has promised you. So you're going to reap everything that God has promised you. But you, like I said, it's, it, it takes walking in obedience. It takes doing what God has told you to do. Yeah, it, it takes all of that, you know, for to receive the promises of God. It receive to receive all of that. You know, you don't want to get to heaven and and God said, I had all this prepared for you in my storehouse, but you refuse to move forward. You refuse to do this, and you refuse to do that. You know, and all this could have been yours. You didn't have to live like that. You could have lived the abundant life. You, we don't want to get to heaven, and God tell us that. You know, so it's so very important that we allow God to be God and do what God is requiring us to do. You know, whatever he's asking us to do, we need to do it. You know, um, just walk forward and move forward in him, you know. And he wants, like I say, he wants the best for us. He loves us. That's that must. And he wants the very best for his people. Well, um, that is all I want to say today. Um, but I, I just thank God for that word about enduring. So like, you know, if you've been enduring some hardships, 
You just know, oh yes, God is getting ready to bless your socks off. You've been doing some hardships. It wasn't nothing for nothing. You're not doing it. You wasn't doing it, enduring for nothing. It was for a purpose. Um, for God, for God to bless you and not only to grow you up more, mature you up more in God, because if you ain't having no hardships or you ain't having no adversity, you ain't going to pray that much. You ain't going to fast that much. You ain't going to get in your word that much. You ain't going to worship or get in his presence that much. But as long as you're going through all that, oh, guess what? We all up in God's face. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just thank God for the word. I thank God for the ones that came on and look at the listen to the live on today. And I pray that y'all will have a blessed rest of your day. And uh, like, and just know God, God got y'all. God got us. You know, God got us. And we don't have to worry about a thing. You know, why, like I said, why that open heaven? It, when that old heaven is open, go ahead and ask God what you, for what you need. And his word said he will supply every need, such as his riches but and glory by Christ Jesus. God bless y'all. I love y'all. I'll see y'all next Thursday.